fill our ground away and it's ugly so clearly something fell on this thing this is really hammered right through here and uh they just slapped a bunch of bondo in it and you know sent it on its way so we're gonna have to fix that um honestly this should be cut out and a new panel welded in but we're not gonna do that um I'm gonna fix it, but I'm absolutely not gonna fix it the correct way. I'm gonna make it good enough. Uh, it'll look a heck of a lot better than it did. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll get some of these big major dents out, but you can see there's creases in here. So this is gonna be really hard to work this back to anything resembling straight. So it's gonna take filler. We're just gonna have to deal with it. And then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll blend the paint in and, and we'll call it good. Hey, what's up, everybody? Time for an old Danny update. Uh, welcome to hot as hell Southern California. It has been absolutely boiling here for the last, geez, more than a couple of months. So well over 100 every day. Uh, that's made working on this thing tough. I don't have room to get it into the garage, so outside is a bit difficult. But uh, that doesn't mean we haven't been doing stuff. Actually, we've got quite a bit of stuff done, and we're excited to show you what's going on. So let me turn the camera around, and we can take a look, and maybe you can even spot a couple things right now. All right, so first of all, we found a great hot rod shop called Old Steel uh, out in Leona Valley, which is not too far from us. So one of the first things we had him do was get rid of that nasty uh, bench seat that was in there. I had purchased a couple of buckets. Um, eventually, we we're going to put buckets in the rear as well, but the two front buckets are in. Um, he did a nice job welding the brackets in. Eventually, it's going to get a roll cage in it, and uh, I have four-point vintage harnesses to go in. So we're just kind of getting started on the interior. Uh, we're going to do the roll cage probably next um, after some work underneath the car, which I'm doing right now, and I'll show you. So uh, not too long we'll be able to get that done. But probably one of the biggest things is the C-pillar. We got the metal work done. So uh, this is all new metal. So uh, Cholo at Old Steel, shout out to him, did a great job. Had to cut all the old stuff out, made a new piece. It uh, turns out that the whole roof was pushed down about two and a quarter inches. Um, I knew it was down. I didn't know it was down that much. So he was able to push quite a bit of that back out, um, put all kinds of new metal in. Um, you can see the whole channel there is all new. And uh, even inside, he was able to kind of pound that back and get that straight. All right, so let's take a look in the trunk. So the other thing that he did is I was able to find a trunk pan. So he welded on the all new floor pan there. You can see that's all sealed up. No more holes back there, which is awesome. Um, eventually it's gonna get a fuel cell back here. But for now, um, we're gonna clean this up and uh, get it painted up here pretty soon. Maybe, maybe in this video. And start working on the interior a little bit to get a little bit nicer. Uh, probably the biggest news though is, check this out. The rear end is completely out of the car. Um, unfortunately, I didn't film this coming out, but it really came out relatively easy. There weren't even any rusted bolts or anything. I just soaked them with some penetrant and started loosening everything up. It took me about an hour to get that out, but the rear end is completely out and uh, we're gonna start on suspension. So still waiting for some more parts, but I have enough stuff to get started on the rear. Um, can't do much with the front yet. We're, UPS uh, has lost a box, which is awesome. It had all the expensive stuff in it. So uh, we're gonna get going on the rear end at least. All right, so here's the rear end. Um, you can see it's pretty grungy. I don't think it's ever been out of the car, which you know makes sense, why would it be? The car was all stock, so no reason for it to come out. So I'm gonna start cleaning that up. Um, you know, we already redid the brakes. Probably gonna replace the brake lines just cause I have new stuff to put in there and it's easy while it's out and uh, just basically gonna clean it up and paint it and then it's gonna go back in the car. And I wanna drive it a little bit um, before I put a posi in and before I think about changing gears, uh, let me show you why. All right, so you guys know that this is not uh, intended to be a quarter mile car or a quick accelerating car. You know, more of a vintage NASCAR cruiser style. And what we'd like to do is uh, 
you know, go to car meets and drive-ins and things like that where, you know, we might have to drive an hour or so to get there. So I always knew I wanted to put a manual transmission in it, but I was struggling between, you know, a vintage top loader four speed, which is correct for the car and a new modern, say Trimic five speed with overdrive, which would allow, you know, easier freeway cruising at lower RPM. So I was kind of stuck, didn't really know what I was going to do. And I was browsing, uh, Craigslist and I came across this. So this is a brand new, just rebuilt zero mile four speed uh, top loader, which is period correct for the car. Now I was really shying away from this particular transmission uh, because of the potential for high RPM cruising. But what makes this one different is it's a wide ratio uh, transmission, which means the, the RPM differential between gears is further apart meaning it's less suited for quarter mile quick acceleration and more suited for higher speed cruising. So to me, this is the best of both worlds. Um, you know, period correct, vintage cool, four speed with uh, hopefully a little bit taller gear and a little more manageability while we're cruising on the highway. So that's why I'm gonna wait, put the rear end back in, drive it around a little bit um, before we put a posse and potentially change the gear ratios because I wanna see what it's like to cruise this thing with the four speed with the current gear ratio. And that'll give me a pretty good idea of, you know, how much lower we need to go. Um, the car has two O gears in it now. I'm thinking we're, if we change, we're probably gonna end up around three O, something like that. So uh, once the suspension is done, um, we're gonna throw the four speed in it. Uh, it's got, it's set up for the 390. It's got 390 bell housing. I've got the shifter, I've got a flywheel, um, the only thing I don't have is a clutch and a pedal assembly. So the clutch is easy. I can order that from Summit. But the pedal assembly, I'm still on the hunt for. So I've got a, a line on some, some period correct ones out of another four-speed car. Or I've been looking and I might go with a hydraulic clutch and put Willwood pedals in it. And I'd have to do a little fabrication to put that in. So I haven't really decided which way to go yet. But uh, that'll be going in you know, relatively soon, uh, like I say, after the suspension is done. Well, let's get underneath the car. I want to show you one more thing. All right, so one more thing we had done um, up at Old Steel is he put in all new exhaust. So I don't know if you remember, but the old stuff was just like thrush turbo mufflers and it was completely rotten through. Um, so this is all new two and a half inch exhaust and I wanted the exhaust to exit um, right in front of the wheels, kind of again, NASCAR style. So. You can see how he, he bent it all around to make it fit in there. Turned out really cool. Um, it sounds bitching too. Unfortunately, I didn't take any video of us driving it. I, I brought it home and started tearing into it right away, but uh, I really like the sound. It's uh, obviously a stock motor, but it doesn't sound so anemic now. So that's really cool. It's got a, an H pipe up front and I wasn't able to fit the headers on. The headers that I bought just, just wouldn't fit. So stock manifolds, uh, but this two and a half inch exhaust will work with the new motor as well. So we'll only have to redo a little bit up front. Uh, let me show you the side exit. It looks kind of cool. So there's where the exhaust exits now. Um, the NASCAR style, they kind of called them boom tubes. And sometimes they were four into one or even eight into one and exiting on one side. We did dual exhaust and it, it exits both sides. So when we get back on the ground, I'll show you kind of how it looks when it's sitting there and uh, hopefully you can hear it run. So Ryan and I are scraping the rear end. So the plan is just to get all the loose stuff off and then we're gonna wire brush it, maybe do some mild sanding, but um, I've got this paint from Eastwood called Rust Encapsulator. And it's, you know, like the other rust um, type paints, but it's fairly thick. And uh, so we're just gonna try to shine up the rear end a little bit basically clean it up a little bit, make it look a little more pretty for when we put it back in the car. Here's 50 years of dirt and grime on here. This is gonna, this is gonna take a while. We're gonna, I guess, scrape as much of it off as we can and then maybe simple green and a pressure washer. Um, just gonna keep after it. This is about 20 minutes worth of scraping. 
It's definitely better, but holy crap, look at all this stuff on the ground. That's a lot of crap. So we're gonna flip it over here and scrape some more on the other side. That's about an hour's worth of scraping and uh, we degreased it and I just pressure washed it. So it's definitely better, but I think we're gonna let it dry and uh, hit it again tomorrow with simple green and a wire brush. And I think we can get quite a bit more of that off and then it'll be good enough to go back in. Uh, we'll, let's see, today's Friday. So we're gonna try to paint it on a Saturday and then have it back in the following day. So wish us luck. And yeah, we're moving on to prepping the trunk for paint. So uh, actually we're gonna undercoat it. So Ryan's gonna vacuum it all out. We're gonna give it a light scuff and try to clean off the obvious dirt and stuff like that. And then uh, go ahead and undercoat right over it. We got these stupid pine trees here and tons of needles inside the car. So that's one of the reasons I'm looking forward to getting a back window in it so we don't have to deal with that anymore. So everywhere the new panel was welded in, um, there's a seam there and it's not continuously welded. So I just applied undercoating, I'm sorry, not undercoating, seam sealer there to seal all those gaps. Uh, that makes sure to keep moisture out. So that's done. And you can see over here, I've started to spray new undercoating in here. So it's just rattle can, nothing crazy, but we want to protect the metal and you know make it look a little bit nicer. So back to spraying. First coat of black going down. Um, just brushing it on. This stuff actually brushes relatively easily. It uh, doesn't look horrible. So that's good. Um, just looking to obviously clean it up. Shiny would be nice, but without vapor blasting it or sand blasting it or something like that, that would be kind of a real pain to do. So we're just going to keep doing it like this. Okay, we're going to call that done. So that's uh, two coats in most places. And uh, you just brush it on, supposedly right over rust. So I wire brushed it and scrubbed it to get the rust off the best I could. But I don't know, it doesn't look too bad. I think that'll work. Not a show car, keep telling myself that. So I need to do a little body work um, right here where the seam was welded up, but I'm not quite ready to do that yet. So I wanna just cover up the bare metal to protect it. So I'm gonna spray on some of the self-etching primer. Um, basically, they'll just keep it from rusting. You can see there's a little bit of flash rust on it already, but that's not really a big deal. That'll all get sanded off when I do the body work. So uh, for now, I'm just gonna try to cover that up a little bit so it doesn't get any worse. So here we go. You can see I got taped off just a little bit, just so I don't get um, crazy amounts of overspray. There's gonna be some, there's just no avoiding it, but the whole car is gonna get cut and buffed anyway. So any of this minor overspray will just get buffed off, so not really that big a deal. Again, I'm just trying to seal it up so that it doesn't continue to deteriorate till I can do the body work, which is probably a week or so away, maybe something like that. And there we go. I finished putting the primer on without trying to hold the camera and spray at the same time. That's kind of a pain in the butt. So there it is with the masking removed, couple coats on. So that's just enough to, um, you know, to cover up the bare metal and keep it from rusting further. So let me grab the key and let's open the trunk and I'll show you what I did back there. And here's what the trunk looks like after I finish spraying the undercoating in here. So good enough. And um, on the inside, we're actually gonna do, on the interior cabin area, we're gonna do something called lizard skin, which is kind of like a spray on bed liner. And it's a little higher quality product than just this rattle can rubberized undercoat that I'm using. So it'll be gray. Uh, in the interior and kind of hard to see but I'm gonna end up masking it off right there and there'll be a line where everything forward of that is gray and then everything behind is the black undercoating so I'll clean that up that transition a little bit more later but for now this is good enough so that's it for this video uh, stay tuned next video I'm hoping we'll be putting the rear end back in and fitting the new suspension so catch y'all later